Hello and good day, nursing students. My name is Lawan Hines Rome, and I am an adjunct instructor as well as an academic coach for writing here at CCBC. Together, I and Hugh Gallagher of Career Service are working together with Perkins, CTE and Perkins, to present to you this resume writing presentation. Let's get into it. For your resume, your resume is an ever-growing document that requires updating at least yearly or every time you receive new skills or training or you accomplish a certificate of some sort. All of that information should be included in your resume, so update your resume regularly. The resume goals that you should focus on is to understand that your resume is to serve as a marketing document that entices recruiters and hiring managers to feel compelled to want to meet you. Most hiring managers spend their days going through so many resumes of qualified job seekers. We want your resume to stand out above all the rest. And in order to do that, we want you to understand first and foremost that studies have found that the average recruiter normally scans less than 10 seconds before deciding if that candidate is a good fit for that particular position. When you have so little time to impress a recruiter, remember and understand that every word in your cover letter and in your resume counts. That's why it's important to carefully choose which terms belong on your resume and which are better left out. Now we will hear from Mr. Hugh Gallagher who will share with you different types of resumes that you are able to use we will also, or he will also discuss with you the importance of using specific types of vocabulary and action words within your resume, as well as your cover letter. So pay attention, take a listen. Hi, my name's Hugh Gallagher, and I help coordinate the career services here at Community College of Beaver County. I wanted to spend a few moments pointing out that what sets a resume apart. From my experience, what sets a resume apart is that it is scannable, targeted, specific, measurable, and flexible. First of all, a scannable resume means that an employer can look through in 10 to 15 seconds and identify what it is that they are looking for from a skills, experience, and education standpoint. In addition, a targeted resume is individualized to the job that you're applying for. So it may include language within the resume that targets a specific position or company. Specific. A good resume is also very specific in terms of what has been accomplished through your experience or education or skills. So much so that it is also measurable. A resume that is effective is able to, to measure through whether it's percentage or impact or numbers or some level of impact on what you accomplished.
a flexible resume is also essential. A resume that's flexible allows for it to be adjusted based upon what's needed for the application process. So you may have two or three pages worth of material, but you only utilize maybe one page or two pages depending upon the industry as well as the position you're applying for. In addition, what's also important about a resume is vocabulary. Taking some time to research the company is a very effective way to be able to work on your words and how you're explaining your accomplishments through your resume. Essentially, you can look at a job description and you can t spend some time researching on the company's website uh, as well as just anything that might be in the news to be able to learn what may be important and valuable to that organization. Your own language is also important as well too, taking some time to use action words, a variety of items as well too, is essential for you to be able to have an effective resume. Moreover, I think that a good resume is a process. And so it involves being able to get some information down um, and revise, revise, and revise. So being able to get some help as well, too, is important with a resume, getting somebody to proofread as well as to sit down and maybe help you identify, identify what some of your experiences are can be extremely helpful. Therefore, we'd love for you to, if you have any questions or need any assistance, please do reach out to Career Services. Uh, we'd be glad to help you with any of your uh, career uh, application needs and uh, look forward to working with you guys and best of luck in your application and um, your future as nurses. We thank you. Wonderful. So I hope that you gained a lot of great information from the different types of resumes that Hugh spoke about and how those resumes can highlight your experiences, past experiences in your professional positions, as well as what you desire and seek for your future positions. What we've included here is just another um, example of the vocabulary that you can use, and you can find yourself describing your work experience with the same boring words over and over again. So as Hugh mentioned, switching those words out for stronger, more compelling action verbs will help to catch the eye of the employer. We've also included a link below at the end, at the bottom of this slide, where you can access for additional assistance for those action words as well. Here is also a list of different action words, words that can assist you in describing your experiences and accomplishments. And again, there's a link at the bottom of the slide. One last thing before we conclude our resume writing PowerPoint presentation for you. It is so very helpful for you as the potential candidate to have a elevator speech. What's an elevator speech? Don't worry, it's not anything that's long and drawn out. It's something that is very short, but very specific. It becomes your sales pitch. So when you are networking or you're meeting people in the community or you're at a job fair and you're speaking about your interests and your desire, and the things that you want to do for the future in regards to your career and your profession, you have what's called an elevator pitch that will last only about one to two minutes, maybe two or three phrases that you can share with that individual to tell them and express what your interest is and what your desires are. You can look up what your elevator speech um, could be or uh, actual potential to your elevator speech um, on the internet, but something as simple as saying, I desire to be an RN and to work at a children's hospital 
Um, that's something that I've, I'm very passionate about because I've wanted to do it all my life or something to the, to the sort. So students to receive a view of other resumes, professional resume types, as well as some of the resume types that Mr. Gallagher spoke of, you can scan this QR code and it'll take you right to the location. So it also includes templates that you can use within that website as well. So what is it that you would like to do? Are you interested in creating a brand new resume and a cover letter? Or do you have a resume and a cover letter and you simply need to have it edited and formatted to be ready to send out into the public? Whatever you need, please come to us and let us know. We are here and we are able to assist you when you're ready. The last two slides simply speak about the format of your resume as well as some things that you can possibly leave out. I won't go through and read them for you, but just remember that you're, you want to make sure that your resume stands out above the rest. You wanna make sure that you have adequate white space. That means space where your margins are equal around your content and that you're kind of looking at and using the information here as a guide to help you format your resume. Again, come to us so that we can assist you if you require the assistance. Also, here are some things that we want you to consider removing. A lot of people from back in the day, as I'll say, we like to include our mailing address. Don't include that information on your resume anymore. At this point, you should have a LinkedIn account. Instead, include your LinkedIn URL address, as well as perhaps your telephone number and your email address. That is sufficient information for the employer to contact you. Sometimes um, individuals tend to leave off even their telephone numbers. So if you want to leave off your telephone number, you can do so. On the other hand, if you have an alternative number, perhaps a landline or even a Google line number, you can include those numbers on your resume if you're not comfortable with including your personal telephone number. References available upon request. I don't know if you're old enough to remember, but at the very bottom of our resumes, we used to include that one statement. Remove that from your resume now. That is no longer relevant. If the employer is interested in seeing or having or speaking to any references you may have, they will ask you. And at that point, you should have a list of references, at least four references, where you can hand them that information and they can call those references. Nowadays, everything is online. So most of the times, you will have to submit that information electronically, okay? So just remove that information all, all together. Um, the other information that is listed here for removal uh, is to make sure that you do not have a headshot on your resume. Some individuals, <coughs> excuse me, will tell you to include that, but we want to um, caution you with doing so. So let them meet you for the first time in the interview if necessary. Let your resume qualifications and the words that you include in your resume and your cover letter speak for you. Okay, so again, if you need assistance, please don't hesitate to contact myself. I am here and I am located in the library when I am not instructing as an adjunct. And then Hugh is here on campus as well. Our email addresses are located there. Please reach out to us and um, whenever you feel the need to either edit your resume or fully develop and format your resume. We are here for you and we look forward to assisting you further in your nursing career. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day.